One of the things I like to impress on the students in my classroom is to make their thinking visible. Oftentimes we ask students, do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Do you understand the process that's going on here? And we get a lot of head nods. But as you know in your own classroom, the head nods oftentimes when you ask them to turn that into written statements, there's a loss of translation there. And they, so we want them to make the connection. It may be going on in their head, they may be thinking it properly, but to have them show you what they're thinking is a very important tool. This next demo that we're going to show you is a catalytic reaction. And oftentimes we lose the idea of a catalyst. We tell kids a catalyst speeds up a reaction. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on. But often we don't show them how it speeds up a reaction. Another term we use is an activated complex. And as we go through this demo, we're going to have a visible activated complex. Two things we try to stress on students, and as we, as we move over to the board, we tell students that the average kinetic energy of a solution is proportional to its temperature. And we try to stress on them that two things must go on in order for molecules to react. They must have enough energy, they must meet, and they must be oriented properly. They must have the appropriate molecular geometry in order for a reaction to take place. They must be oriented properly. And the analogy that I always use is, if two train cars bump and one end of one train car bumps the side of another, they may not stick together. You need them end to end so the couplers can grab each other and then you ha can, the train can pull the car away. Now, if you get enough energy and you hit a train car on the side, they may stick together and that would not be desirable. That's an undesirable reaction. So we want the desirable reaction, we want the appropriate orientation, and we want the appropriate amount of energy. What I've done here is I have potassium sodium tartrate, approximately 100 milliliters of a 0.21 solution, heating up. To that, I've added about 40 milliliters of 6% hydrogen peroxide. I've heated this up to approximately 70 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to set the thermometer aside. And I've got just a few bubbles forming in there. One of the main products of this reaction is carbon dioxide. Well, as you know, in any reaction, we say that a catalyst speeds up a reaction. Being from the Midwest, I refer to Michael Jordan being a catalyst to the Bulls for many years. He sped up the Bulls without himself being used up, and they won six championships. The Bulls moved faster, more efficiently while he was in there, and he really didn't get used up. While we watch that CO2 form there, I'm going to make my catalyst, and the catalyst that I'm going to make is a little bit of cobalt-2 chloride. I've got 0.4 grams weight out in there, and to that I'm going to add just about 10 milliliters of distilled water. And you can notice the pink color of our catalyst. And what's going to happen is our catalyst is going to give another pathway, another mechanism for this reaction to take place. And it will speed up the reaction. Now I'll let you decide for yourself, but I'm okay, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to pour this catalyst into here, and you're going to see a certain color change. It's pink now. As that reaction takes place, what color is that changing? That's a nice green color. The evolution of carbon dioxide gas increases quite rapidly at this point in time. And what else do we tell students about a catalyst? Is once it's done its job, it really should not be used up. And so we get the return of the pink cobalt chloride color that we started with initially. The reason for the color change is while we've increased or lowered the activation energy, the cobalt 2 plus ion is a pink color. As it moves through the activated complex portion of the reaction, the cobalt 3 plus ion is green. As the electrons are traded and moved and the reaction takes place, then it will come back to the CO2 plus which comes back to pink again. Another very important thing to show students is 
the activated uh, complex, the activation energy lowers, and so we'll move over to the easel. We can see here we've got a, an uncatalyzed reaction along with a catalyzed reaction. And it doesn't cut off that hill. What it does is it offers another pathway, another mechanism. It makes the reaction more efficient such that it takes a pathway of lower activation energy. Also being in the Midwest, I can throw this at them. And I'll, I'll oftentimes use some tricks or tips to, to get the kids to, to link and make connections, make your thinking visible. And uh, I'll, I'll throw this at them. And, and I'll say, OK, what's this? And they'll look, and they'll look. And, and I teach in the suburbs, so some of the city kids just don't get it. Eventually I'll have, oh, yeah, that's my list of cattle. So that's my cattle list uh, that we use for the, so that's the. And I'll just refer to that all. Remember, catalyst, yes, yes, Mr. Hines, catalyst, we got it. So that, that's my catalyst. One of the main new things that we try to get across to kids is, with the nanotechnology that's coming today, industry is able to build catalysts that are molecular specific, that will do a very specific job so we're not wasting materials, we're not wasting energy, and they can actually build and design these using the, the nanotechnology that's coming. And that's, that's where we're going with this, and that's really one of the things that I try to get across. And we can do it quite well by making our thinking visible with the visible activated complex pink to green to pink catalyst. Thank you.